The following show is a paid program. are the best man thank you man i appreciate y'all coming here oh man thank you for having us man on tonight you guys have got to go see them phil and derrick's tonight and tomorrow 7 p.m and 9 30 p.m and we're gonna talk about that shout out to al d freeman and oscar mcgar for hooking us up how did we get started starting off with ray etc how you doing ect yes mr etc First of all, where did you get that name from, man? Man, you know, life put me through some things, and I was I had me in a lot of different fields from entertainment to music to, and I just got tired of explaining that stuff to people. So I was like, man, <laughs> what's one way you can sum all that up? And I was like, et cetera. Exactly. Way, et cetera, man. There you go, That's Mr. One. How we jump into here? How we get into being a comedian? It happened really <laughs> fast. In 92, I started like in March. And then uh, eight months later, I was on BET and HBO. Wow. Yeah. I but I, but I was working with G. Anthony Brown and Steve Harvey and, you know, Paul Mooney and stuff. So I was, in those eight months, I got a lot of knowledge and I picked up a lot of stuff and they got me on BET right away. And wow. It was really cool. Where did they see you? At the Hip Hop Comedy Stop. <laughs> it was uh, it was owned by Steve Harvey, G. Anthony Brown, and Rushon McDonald. Absolutely. David Ray Bond as well. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. You're ex. Exciting to see. Man, Mr. Ray, back to you. Comedy. Why comedy? Uh, I think it's one of the best ways to give off a message, yeah. to give off, uh, you know, the knowledge that I do have. I, music I was involved in, but it's only so many, so many genres that you can get into when you deal with music, especially being a black man. You know, uh, I, th- I didn't think rap was the lane that I wanted to take anymore with the influence that it was giving, so I wanted to do something that was a little more positive and mm-hmm. I, you, I, I, I was always a living room comedian, <laughs> so I was like, man, let me try to take it to the stage and see what I can do, and it's been working out pretty good. What I love about you both being together, that combination, you know? Oh, it's going to be fun. I mean, yeah. it's going to be fun tonight. Oh, yeah. Tonight and tomorrow, my God, two shows, 7 yes. p.m. and 9.30 p.m., the famous Phil and Derrick's yes. Lounge, the Speakeasy Lounge on the side, mm-hmm. and yeah. man, it is going to be off the chain, both of you guys. Mr. Juan, wow, local comedians here, Houston. Yeah. Um, and I was just telling you guys, I'm trying to bring Hollywood to Houston. Mm-hmm. Okay. But in doing so, many people with the local entertainers yeah. are saying, man, how do we become mainstream? Well, back then, you had to get on TV, get a special, and stuff like that. Now, you know, people are going to do it with their phones. Mm-hmm. They can create, you know, content with their phones exactly. and be funny and Instagram and get followers and TikTok and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It, you know, times have changed and the older comics, you know, like me, I've been doing comedy for 28 years. Mm. So my friends are like, oh man, these guys are just, they're selling out comedy clubs right. and comedy club. But I'm like, they're, they're making their money. If we were them, and we wanted to time, do it. Yeah. I would do it too. I'd be like, man, I don't get what them old dudes, you know what I mean? Exactly. I don't get what them old BG dudes did. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to get my money. Right. And I'm thinking, like, we should just help them. I do. I'd say, don't no, no, do this, do it like this. Right. Like, you look out for them, man. Like, there's yeah. enough for everybody to eat, but people yeah. get a little greedy, a little jealous, and yeah. little yeah. egos get hurt and stuff. And, like, can definitely see that. Ray, yeah. I know you see the same thing. Yeah, I've, um, I've definitely, I understand exactly where he's coming from. But it's uh, I think I fit in the lane of best of both worlds. I understand from yeah. the OG standpoint yeah. to to the 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 uh, original grind. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Going from open mic to open mic to getting noticed in those ways. 
as opposed to just jumping on the internet and paying for followers or, you know, mm-hmm. having a friend that has 500,000 followers. If he shares your post one time, you got a good chance of going viral right then and there. But it definitely helps. I can't say it doesn't help, man. It is. I think it's just what we have to use in this day and age. And I'm sure if they had Instagram back in the Jerry Curl days, they would have been, <laughs> <laughs> we would have seen that same thing back then. So You know what, Rick? BET used to pay us $150 to perform <laughs> and wow. comics and, and you got to pay for your own room, your own travel, your own everything. Wow. And, and we would make it. We would drive to LA. Yeah, 150. And we were ha- we would wait in line and, you know what I mean? Audition, do whatever we had to do to be there. Right. So, yeah, we, we were doing yeah. it in a different way. Mm-hmm. But, you know, now you can do it with your phone. You and I think it. it's great, man. Yeah. If these guys can do that, like I said, I'll help you out, bro. Let right. me. Yeah. But you know what I found out? The ones that do are on the phones when they first start and things like that, when they're doing stand up like you guys are tonight, Mm -hmm. they can't make it because the length of time they can't continue. They don't have enough material to go as long as that. Definitely makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? That's Mm -hmm. that's the hard part. Yeah, that's the hard part. And people say, do you think they'll ever be? Can they be like you? Like, yes, if you work hard right. and, and, and right. do stuff like a chingo bling, chino do. There's some people that are doing it. So if you work hard and put your work into it, you, you can be funny. Because we had to win our crowd right. over. Yep. Like when right. I opened up for Cedric and Bruce Bruce, like I was the only Latino on the show right. in the 90s for everybody. Right. DC Curry and some more, did the show Underwood. So it was like, y'all ready to see Cedric the Entertainer? Some more. Y'all gonna have a great time, man. Y'all give it up for Juan Verrill. And they would just throw me out there. Right. So they'd be clapping and you see a little Mexican, like, wait. <laughs> yeah, and then I would have to be like, what's up? And, right. and then the black we, audience would be like, wait a minute. Yeah, what, he, what, 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 what are you doing out here? <laughs> yeah. And I would have fun with it sometimes. Yeah. I, That's I the thing about this industry. If you're funny, you're funny. Yeah. And yeah. when you have a talent, if it, it, it speaks for itself sometimes. Mm-hmm. This is one of those industries, whether you're a rookie or you just started, once yeah. you get on that stage, it'll definitely show yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, what you got or what you can do with it. Mm-hmm. The first two, three years, I had to win them over, but BET showed so much reruns. And yes. I was, you know, I did it 11 times. So they showed so many reruns, so then it be, I became like a special guest. Yeah. So it was really cool. It'd be like, you know... That's one thing about BET. Right. So they then, don't show it yeah. over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, they yeah. go 100 die. You, yeah. <laughs> you can just count on it. Another thing, too, with we don't have as many as the one platform that we do have now mm-hmm. that we that's still kind of relevant for comedians is Wild or Not. Yeah. Well, back, you remember back then, you used to have Def Comedy Jam. You had right. Comedy View. You had so many things that, that you could strive to get to as a comedian. Mm-hmm. But now, like, they, like he just said before, you almost have to jump immediately into making you a special or making you, you know what I'm saying, a DVD. Mm-hmm. Early on, you used to have to wait to do those kind of things until you were more experienced, or until you were ready, polished enough to do that. But now, if you ain't ready to be thrown out to the woods, you're going to get ate up real fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that we've got COVID-19 mm-hmm. just impacted the world, just stopped, yeah. okay? Put a pause on everything. How is the industry? Let's talk about it. Juan, you talk about that. It, it right? hurt a lot of comics. Yeah. It hurt a lot of my friends because they started really blowing up the year before that. Right. And they started upgrading houses, beer, mm-hmm. houses, car, but they, they were doing well. And when this hit, you know, we were really bad. I've been taking care of, I was taking care of my parents for seven years. Like my dad passed away in October. Mm-hmm. So I lost, we, you know, whatever. We, I lost everything, like houses, cars, the pawning stuff. It went really, really bad. So, but I grew up like that. I grew up in the hood, so I was poor. <laughs> so it's like, okay, struggling. But we were happy, we we're healthy. We're okay. I got my grandkids and, and everything. So I started doing Zoom shows mm-hmm. because my overhead is not, I'm like, I got a really nice two-bedroom apartment, bro. Mm-hmm. We got two baths. We got a cable. <laughs> and I got paper. That's how rich I am. Like, I got pay-per-view because... Now, you know, working, <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't got to ask permission for nobody. Like, I can, yeah. I, I do a joke about it. Like, I'm so rich, bro, I can buy a movie for four ninety nine, <laughs> and like, and not even watch it, just throw the remote on. I, I ain't even got to watch it. I, I'll buy it again tomorrow. I'll buy it again tomorrow. Right. And my cousin's like, yeah, good, we bought it, we buy it again. You buy it three times. And then I stop, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Wait. Wait, hours, not, wait, a not, 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 wait a minute! Now you're That's trying to now you're trying to break a twenty, bro. We're trying to keep it on the ten. Now you're now you trying to bust a twenty. Like, you, see what I'm saying? you want me to go back to being poor? Like no, no, I want to stay rich like this. I like so that. I was really lucky, and then some comics can uh, like I would say, bro, they want comics for Zoom shows, and oh, I don't do comedy no phone. I don't do comedy no phone. They're paying two thousand. I don't put my money. They're paying two thousand dollars. 
So all you comics, I haven't told all of y'all, but that's how much they were going to pay you. $2,000 for you to sit in your living room. In your living in your room, room, I had a little curtain. I had the lights on my phone. $2,000 to do an hour. And then you do 30 minutes of Q&A. And these are some of the great questions right. that these people had. So it's like... I had my cat, I was in socks in my living room because it was waist up. And I would do the voices. Man, I swear, dude, that I would just have fun. Right. So it was like, and every now and then the host would unmute the people so I could hear them laughing. Mm -hmm. Like you could hear everybody laughing, and then he would mute them again so I could just keep going and just flowing. And and then you hear that little cash out, the little coin. Oh man, I love that. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then doing three or four shows a week wow. at two, like you know, we fly out of town to do you know, shows of fifteen hundred, two thousand. Like we'll we'll fly and mm -hmm. or drive or whatever. But to do it in your living room, that was so cool. Yeah. And people, I can't yeah, do that. Like I can't. <laughs> oh, you huh? Yeah. Mr. Ray, Mr. Yes. Ray, we were talking about the COVID, but let's talk about the business of comedy. Many people have the talent. But the business, they're not being represented. They lose mm -hmm. money because they're not represented or they don't understand the contracts or whatever. Or there's a handshake. Yep. And then at the end of the thing, yeah, we had a handshake, but uh, we ain't got no money. But uh, we got 500 people in the, you know, exactly. in the audience. Exactly. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you know, people get taken. Yeah, a lot. A lot. In this industry, I've definitely seen it a lot. I'm, and I've only been in the game for... Two and a half years. Yeah. I've just happened to make a lot of traction in these two and a half years that mm -hmm. I've gained. But when I first started, somebody told me I wasn't going to make any money till year five. Wow. That's what I was told. And so I went and produced my own show. Mm. When I started producing, I started to rent out venues. I was already friends with most of the the the, uh, the high-end comics that were out here from Little Daryl to Ali Sadiq to mm -hmm. Billy Sorrells and... Once I learned that it was nothing to just go rent a venue and just get the, pay them and get these guys in here to do a show. I started to do it like that, but it made me, it, it gave me a chance to, because I wasn't going to have a chance to be on the shows with these guys unless I booked myself on them. Wow. And, it, and at the same time, it made me, I wanted to be just as good as they was on the show. So it, it was, I was booking them and it was making me, you know, step my game up to be just as good as they was when, mm -hmm. I, when I was on the show mm -hmm. with these guys. But the business side is definitely a, a, a place where you can get taken advantage of, because a lot of people say, well, you can come do this show for exposure. Right. You know, we hear, I've heard that thrown around mm -hmm. so many times, but hey, man. Your resume. It, yeah. Exposure sometimes is good, but if I got to pay uh, <laughs> $200 <laughs> in gas money to come, uh, right. I mean, it's like. Then so, you go to the show and it's like nine people. Nine people. <laughs> <laughs> good exposure. Yeah, it's good exposure. You know what I mean? See, because they would tell us BET is good exposure, and we did it. We drive and mm -hmm. pay. It would cost you a couple grand to get out there and do all right. that. But as soon as it aired, and if they liked you, you had 30, 40 gigs. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like that. Like I can just imagine. Mm -hmm. Just it was just like that. Just mm -hmm. overnight. Like my manager was, hey man, they call it, they call how much I'll, and we'd give them a price. And I just, you know what I mean, call me next week, bro, because this is gonna be going on forever. Right. And because I was Latino, it was easy for like DC Curry, like Bruce Bruce, <laughs> right. and for them to say, you know, because like if you have three Latinos on the show or three Mexicans on the show, they're going to talk about the same stuff, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they would love to have, you know, Juan go out there right. and do his little 25 minutes and then Cedric or then, or Bruce Bruce and right. stuff like that. And so I was, get, I was getting so, uh, yeah, put some diversity on the show and I wouldn't step on their material. Right. So that was. The, what I look at and I look at both of you all and then I see other comics and I talk to them too. What they've always said is that when you have talent, you have talent, but it's work. Oh, yeah. And many people don't want to do the work. Yeah. You they want to. to do the, put the phone up to them and do whatever mm -hmm. they want to do with the phone. Yeah. But it's still the work. Like you went to open mics. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You've been, to, you know, you traveled yeah. and you've been to different places. I used to drive to LA to do open mics. Wow. Yeah. I would come to, you know, do a show in Texas or whatever and drive to LA. From so, Texas? Yeah. From Houston? Yeah. 26 hours. 26 hours. Yep. A lot of times, sometimes twice a week. Sometimes I'd yeah. go and do chocolate Sundays, and then I would do Latino Mondays at the Laugh Factory. And then I did, uh, Eddie Griffin would get me on the show uh, Fat Tuesdays mm -hmm. at the Comedy Store. And Eddie Griffin, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and you know, we used to, you know, he, well, he used to kick it with Tupac a lot. Mm -hmm. So, But I, I got to, you know, be there a few times and met Pac and stuff like that. So that was really But cool. I understood what you said. You drove, drove. 26 hours drove. there. Yep. And 26 hours back, because yep. it's like, you got to come back. And coming back happy, woo, man. Yes. Yeah, so. 
The Did feeling you? that you give people when you really making somebody laugh from the heart and the soul is priceless, man. Wow. It's, it's really priceless. You wouldn't even think it. You, right. And then, like you said, the drives, man, going on the road with the comic crew, Ladero, Lee Brother mm-hmm. Third, MC Lotto, man, this is some of the best times I've had on a road trip. Mm. Four comedians in a van together, nonstop talking, just great conversation. Man, yeah. some of the best times you could have. Absolutely. Yeah. And see, and me, it was just me and my manager. And back then, we had our cell phones, but there was no uh-uh. Wi Fi. Well, none Wi-Fi. of this. Stuff. It, it was exactly. Like, you flip just, phone. You just seek on a radio. That radio was just. <laughs> so we had a couple of cassettes or CDs. And, right. And we had cassettes, but we had some CDs. And then, uh, yeah, it was no. Now you, you could be on Facebook. You could do whatever. I mean, the car's got Wi Fi. You can do. So it'd Absolutely. be a lot easier now. But, but I don't. Yeah, I can just, I can just imagine taking. Hours. A, I can just imagine a road trip, twenty six hours in, one way in a, in a Delta eighty eight. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't imagine we, that. We were killing Enterprise. We were good. You killing we Enterprise? Were, yeah, because they were like, you know, we came back and you know, we were working with them for a while. Uh huh. Like, I'll be putting some miles on these cars, bro. <laughs> you know, they're trying to say unlimited. Yeah. Think they go give you something, yeah. but you really did do unlimited yeah, mileage. Yeah, we had to. Man. We had to. I, I think we're the ones that changed that. Stuff. I think like, you did. Like, hey, bro, you changed like, that to unlimited yeah. mileage because at first it was so many miles, and then after that mileage, you got to pay. Yeah. They asked me one time. They they called us and uh, we had to go meet with them because you know we had they were like kind of like sponsored and helped. Yeah. Us. And they're like, hey man, what what did y'all drive this car to? Like, where did y'all go? I said we went from Houston. To El Paso, and then Ooh. Steve Harvey wanted me to do uh, his show uh, big time at the mm. show. So I did, we drove from Houston to El Paso, that's like 12, 13 hours, 14 hours. I performed and then drove that night, me and my manager, to LA, did the Steve Harvey show the next day, whatever, and then drove to Tennessee. That was 55 hours. So, yeah, so we went like that. So, in a car. Yeah, to one show. To one show. Yeah, it was a college gig with Michael Blackson. So I was like, yeah, I go work with that dude. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't like to fly back then. I was like, nah, man, because you know, Mexicans, when they start blowing yeah. up, it's over there, Richie. Yes. See, so you, so yeah. you said Hollywood to Houston. I That's told you, this Hollywood is Hollywood right to here Houston. in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood yeah. to Houston. Yeah. My God. He's done some great things. You've done yeah. some great things. But that was determination. You were determined to do it. Oh, yeah. Now we've got people that are working. Well, let's say 40 million people are not working, okay? Let's say that. Uh, because of COVID and all the other things, right? They have that dream. They want to do it. And we were talking about what they should do now, okay? Mm-hmm. They don't have a job, but they still have that dream in them. Yep. Let's tell them what they need to do. Just look into that camera. You, Mr. Juan, first. Yeah. Just, this one. Just keep working. There's always, you know, some of the comics do skits. Some of them do podcasts. Some of them tell stories. Uh, just keep working. Keep being creative. You can do stuff. And, you know, some of the comics that have fans, because even some of the young comics that are in the game, they already have followers and fans and stuff. I started a uh, 100 Club. To all my fans, like, during COVID, I was like, look, I can sell you a shirt or a DVD or something. What I did, I made these cards, 100 cards, and they're $100 each, and you get, but it's good until the end of next year. So it's like, look, you send me $100, I'll send you a card, I'll send you my phone number, I bought a VIP phone, so we get to talk, chat, FaceTime each other. So that's what I did. That's how I connected <laughs> no. with my fans. So when I talk to them, when they call me, I know exactly who I'm talking to because there's a number because every it's one through a hundred and everyone has a number assigned. So when I speak to them, I talk to them and we and I know what we talked about. I know if there's someone to gain the last time. I know, you know, by jobs and stuff like that. So you can connect with your fans. I mean, because you're not doing anything. So if you're at home, you can use this time and utilize it and study. Study the game because it's changing. But to study and try and learn as much as you can and be creative and, and don't give up, bro. Like if it doesn't work right away, keep keep at it. You know what I mean? Mr. Ray, talk to the people. Uh, to my nearest dreamer, um, dreams are important. You need to have those to keep the drive going in yourself. I definitely think uh, faith, without, faith without works is dead. So you definitely have to put the pedal to the metal and grind. That word grind is a, a old school term that is still relevant today, man. Grind. At the end of any grind, you'll see something pay off. And so definitely, man, keep your, your, your faith high and your grind at an ultimate maximum level, man. And I think you'll get as further as you, that you want to be.
Sounds good. We have a flyer of it today, of what you all going to do tonight. Should have a flyer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess we don't. Phil and Derek's tonight. Good we want to just tell you, let's tell them Phil and Derek's tonight. They will be 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. on today and tomorrow. Isn't that right? No, we no, got two no, shows. One show one today. One, today. one show tonight. One, one show today. Seven, nine, and then two shows tomorrow yeah. at okay. 7 and 9.30. Sounds good. Yes. We will be back with our next guest, Marcus Bailey. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. Ron Carter Cadillac, Houston's only Cadillac to your door dealer, delivers test drives to your home or office. Like the new 2020 XT4 Luxury Collection, only $299 a month. The new 2020 XT5 Premium Luxury Collection, $399 a month. Or the first ever 2020 XT6 Premium Luxury Collection, just $499 a month. All for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase and choose 0% APR for 60 months plus $2,000 bonus cash with no payments until March 2021. Visit roncartercadillac.com. I'm a Texas voter. And I plan to vote by mail-in ballot. I'm a Texas voter. And I plan to vote safely in person. I'm a Texas voter. And I plan to vote early. I am a Texas voter. And I plan to vote safely in person. In this coming election, voters aged 50 plus will make all the difference. We'll make the difference. We'll make the difference. We'll make the difference. We'll make the difference in elections across the state. So make a plan now. So you can vote however you choose. It doesn't matter where you vote how you vote, or who you vote for. What matters, what matters, what matters, what matters is that you have a plan to vote. For more information, head to aarp.org slash tx. Vote. 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 Di balko. Or vote ka na mat bhuli ga. Vote. 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 Ngoi hoi thao piu. When it comes to protecting yourself and your partners, all the information out there can be overwhelming. Visit our website. We are a free and confidential service striving to help you stay informed and stay notified. We are committed to a healthy Houston. If you helped a friend get a job and once they were hired, they ignored you, what would you think of them? For a quarter of a century, Congressional District 18 has voted for Sheila Jackson Lee. And what do we have to show for it? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 13 times, she's got to go. I'm Wendell Champion, and I need your vote. Visit me at champion2020.com. I'm Wendell Champion, and I approve this message. Hello again, Stafford. We are extremely proud of the diverse community we have in Stafford. We need you to get out and vote for Cecil Willis. Have you been injured in an 18-wheeler accident, truck accident, car accident? Was someone texting and ran into the back of you, not paying attention? It doesn't matter what it is. Give me a call, Attorney Willie Powell. We'll fix it today. The number is 281-881-2457. Again, that number is 281-881-2457. We'll fix it today. Call attorney Willie Powell. And now back to the Cam Hill Show.
can hear you. There you go. Hello, I can hear you. I can't hear you. Marcus, can you hear me? I hear you now. You hear me now. So Demarcus Bailey yes, is a sir. filmmaker, he's CEO of Bailey Productions, JF Bailey Productions, and also he has a movie, Love and Drugs, uh, two, the movie. Uh, it's going to be premiered on Sunday, and I'm going to be in. I'm going to come over there and look at it. Yeah. Glad to have you. Glad to Glad have to you, have my you. friend. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about filmmaking. How did we get started in this? No, it's, it's kind of weird how um, I got started doing this. I um, I was at a church at my uh, I was at church and we did a skit. The uh, church did a skit called Change. And during that time, I was dealing with uh, a lot of anger that I was dealing with because uh, of some stuff that happened to me when I was a child. And the skit was called Change, and it talked about how things happen in your life, how it makes you to be who you are. So after the skit, you know, it was weighing heavy on me, you know, God was pulling on me. So I went to the altar and I let that go. Every, every, all that stuff I was dealing with inside of me, I let it go. So I, I said to myself, I said, uh, if this helped me, I know it'll help, help someone else. So I put the skit on at a bigger venue and it sold out. And um, people was kept asking me, when are you going to write another play? And I was like, I don't, I don't write plays. I just did that because to help someone. So, but I ended up writing one called Particle Son, me and a guy named Andre Loggins. Did the play in Tyler and like 1,700 people showed. And people kept asking me, you need to write another play. I'm like, I don't write plays. I don't even know what that is. But I was in the stage of uh, Urkel. I watch Urkel a lot. So I wrote a play called uh, Single and Say uh, about how people look for love, but you know, it, it's right in their face, but it's not what they want to look like. So I did that play, 300 people came. I'm like, wow, what is this? And people kept asking me, you need to keep writing. And I ended up writing and stuff blew up. Went to, did a play called How to Love. I met a guy named Snoop. Snoop came on and made me a professional. And things just blew up for me. You know, I ended up writing Love and Drugs, just doing something, you know. Just didn't know what I was doing. Just in a writing a movie, and things just blew up. Blew up for me. That is crazy, my friend. That yeah, is so crazy. crazy. Wow. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, we're going to Demarcus Bailey. He's uh, we're doing virtual with him. But Love and Drugs Two film is what he has, and let's put him back on. There you oh, go. Can, what can happened? You see me? Yeah, I can see you. I dropped the phone. Oh, I know mine too. Crazy. So <laughs> anyway, but just wanted to tell you about Love and uh, Love and Drugs Two movie. You have a premiere on Sunday. It's going to be yes, off of the Beltway here, here in Houston. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We um we did Love and Drugs One last year, and uh, it was a huge success. Uh, like I said, it was my first movie I ever done, and it was. I mean, it took over the country. It was a huge, huge success. Wow. So the distribution company, yeah, the distribution co company called and they wanted me to do a two. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the two and I wanted to uh, push it out a little bit more myself. So we started a little promo tour uh, where uh, we went to, we did Dallas, we sold out in Dallas. Uh, we did Tyler two shows, sold out those two shows. Now we're doing Streetport. We sold out Streetport. Houston this weekend, we sold out Houston. And we're going to Atlanta on November 1st. And you and I was just talking to shout out to Candace Renee out of Dallas who contacted me. We've just, you know, been hugging up together and stuff like that. One of the best publicists, yeah. I tell you, she is the best and yeah. told me all about this movie. Let's talk about what's the premise of this movie, Love and Drugs 2. You know, um, people people will think when they see the word drugs. In the movie, they automatically think it's a hood or a ratchet or a raunchy story, and it's not. It's actually a, a good love story. It just we just incorporated the word drugs to bring people in because you know people love negativity. I mean that's that's just what it is. People love negativity, so 
I've I'm not I've never been a, a drug dealer, never been that type of person. My grandfather would be rolling over his grave if he, if he even know I wasn't even doing this really. But I've always been infatuated with it. I've always been infatuated with the uh the respect that they get. Like the drug dealers get they get so much respect and they have so much clout. I've always been infatuated with that. But I'm a sucker for love stories. So mm-hmm. I've, I've always been a Titanic type person or uh, the poetic justice or, mm-hmm. you know, love drone. That's the type of person. I, I love those type of movies. So I just incorporate those two things together to make a beautiful love story. You know, the drugs is maybe 5% of the movie. The rest is just, you know, love and loyalty. You know, it's a real good, real good love story. Wow. In looking at that, I love the fact that you have dedicated a lot of your life towards filmmaking and also talking to people that are local, that have maybe done plays or so. What would you tell them as far as how to go into filmmaking? Because many times they want to do that, you know, from the play and then screenwriting, you know? Right, right, right. I tell them just do it. You know, uh, don't be afraid to uh, jump out there. You know, like I said, man, I... I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, don't let your 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 you're not knowing what to do stop you because I didn't have a clue. Right. You no, know, I had people who who helped me. Snoop Robinson helped me. You know, get out there and um, you know, kind of taught me the filmmaking business. Right. But when I first did, I I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I didn't know how to write. I just knew that I could write a good story. What I would say is, you know, just don't be afraid. Just do it. You know, do your research and just do it. You know, you never know uh, how things pick up. Entertainment business is never going to go, never going to go away. People love entertainment. You know, they love movies. They love laughter, laughter, and they love, you know, to see good love stories. So don't be afraid of it. Just go out and do it. That's exactly why I brought you on today because I felt so. Uh, strongly about many people wanting to do exactly what you do. We have 40 million plus people, as I was stating earlier, that are unemployed, that are dreamers, you know? But they feel feel like they have to work, but many times it's in them to do it, but they're frightened. Let's talk to them about the fear. Right. You know, fear, man, fear is only... Fear is... I don't believe in fear, you know, me, because, uh, like I said, I mean... I didn't know. I didn't mm-hmm. have a clue what I was doing. Um, just jump out there, you know. I just jumped out there and believed in what I was, what God was giving me, and just did it. So, I mean, if you're scared, I mean, if you, if you think you're fearful, man, just erase the doubt, erase the fear in you. You just do it, mm-hmm. you know. Just do it. I mean, you, the the success of people saying good job or the feeling of people enjoying, you know, what you're doing over succeeds everything. The things that you went through to go, go to get there, all of that, man. I just feel like just go ahead and do it. Fearful or not, just go mm-hmm. ahead and do it. The things are going to go in your favor. Absolutely. I love the fact that now you, DeMarcus, are one of the people that I personally know that have really uh, opened yourself up in telling people what to do. Many of us don't as a people. We don't share our knowledge. We think if we share it, then you're going to take our gifts. And everybody has their own gift. You can't take someone else's. When somebody else has their blessing, they're going to have their blessing. You know? And we don't understand that. I'm a firm believer, firm believer, that what God has for me is for me, regardless. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how I help people, regardless of anything, what God has for me is going to be for me, regardless. No. I don't, I'm not afraid to give people what I know because, I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to affect what God has, you know, right. what I always remind people of, of, of the story of Peter when Peter was walking across the water and Jesus was telling him, come here, you know, just mm-hmm. come here. And when he, as soon as he doubted, he sunk. Yeah. As soon as he doubted, he started sinking. But it's when he believed, he mm-hmm. began to walk on water and do those things that we that we think is impossible. Right. So right. that's that's my I, I'm a firm, firm, firm believer of that. No matter what, I don't care what it is. If I if I I know what God brought me here for. I know what the things that I have. I know that people gave 
me. People help me. So I would be, I would sell myself short if I didn't help people who ask me to. I mean, I'm going to always be that person, always, no matter what. Before anything, I'm going to be that person to help. Absolutely. Most people are fearful of the uh, money. The first thing they say is, I don't have right. money. I know you've heard that. Yeah. I don't have oh, money. Yeah. Oh, I'm broke. I don't oh, have yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't either, you know, but I had, I had, I had a great, I mean, I had my family, man. I had a great, I have a great support system, man. Good. I have a huge support system, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, whatever I do, whatever I ask, we, we do it, you know, because people believe in me, you know, right. and, man, you know, we just do it. Well, my friend, I appreciate you so much for everything you're doing. I appreciate the opportunity that you've given us and appreciate you bringing things to Houston. Thank you so much. I'm from, I'm actually from Houston. I was born in Houston. Okay. All right. All righty. Yeah, well, what, what's the last words you'd like to tell people about your premiere? Uh, this, this Saturday, um, well, it's, it's actually sold out, but, uh, the people who come in, I mean, we, we can't wait to see you guys there. Uh, it's going to be a great, we're going to have a great time, a great, uh, Great time, love story, a great love story. The action movie comes out December first on platforms everywhere: Vudu, Hulu, Prime, everywhere. And um, just go check it out. Go out, go look at, go check out Love and Joys One first. Go check out Love and Joys One. Check it out and uh, go check out my artist, uh, All Biz, uh, AB. He's on Spotify, everywhere. Just go check us out. Absolutely. What's the website if they want to just look at some things for the website or Facebook or whatever? Uh, W, you can go on Facebook, uh, I am Demarcus Bailey, or you can go on our fan page, it says Love and Drugs, the movie, or our uh, Instagram is Love and Drugs, the movie. Uh, our, our website is www.jfbaileyfilm.com. Absolutely. I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you have done. Uh, care so thank much you, about you, man, and I will be there. I'm going to come looking, too. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Take care. Okay. All right. What? Thank you so much. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you, Houston, for everything. Like I said, I have in the building today with me Diana Patterson. She is not only my friend, but man, she produces my show, so you get to see her. This weekend is her birthday, so I wanted to say happy birthday to her, and I thank her so much for just the opportunity. I made a surprise to her this morning, and I said, hey, I need you in the studio. She's like, I don't know why you're bringing me <laughs> <laughs> to the studio, but there's some things I wanted to say to her other than happy birthday. Uh, I wanted to tell Houston how this show, the Cam Hill Show, actually started. I started 90 days into going from my birthday. And I wanted to sign up, but in doing so, six months in, I was having to pay so much money just trying to keep it going. And I had talked to her about it, uh, telling her, I'm going to, man, I'm giving up. I'm not going to do it anymore. One thing she had always said is never give up. You're not going to stop. And a year and a half later, as of today, I thank you, my friend, oh. so much. <laughs> because had it not been for you, I wouldn't have been here. Mm. I believe in you, you know, Cam, um, you know how we met. Yeah. Um, I actually, it's a funny story how Cam and I met because I, I didn't ask him. I told him <laughs> that he needed uh, me and my cast on his radio show. Um, and it was just something very special about you from day one. Um, I loved your compassion and your passion to uplift, inspire, and educate the community. Um, and your platform was just different. It was something different about you. There was something so authentic and organic about how you connected with the community that touched me in a special way. So I was a big fan of you from yours right away. Our whole cast, uh, we stand behind you. And to see you here now on television um, as you transcended from radio is just amazing. And I'm just so honored. Mm. I'm honored to be sitting here with you in this beautiful <laughs> studio. Um, but again, this is just the beginning. I think the best is still yet to come. I'm telling you, my friend, it's been a uh, a long time. I appreciate you so much. And I wanted to tell you that today. Uh, family, her birthday is going to be uh, on Sunday. And uh, I just wanted to say happy birthday to you. I wanted to say God bless you. I'm wishing you all of God's blessings, 
all of God's favor overflowing all mm, over I the world. That. And I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Because had it not been for you to continue to tell me, yes, you can do it. Yes, you're going to pay. Yes, you're going <laughs> to do that. Yes, you're going to keep going. Yeah. Thank you for everything. And Houston, thank you for everything you have done. Thank you, A-Star TV, for all you guys have done. Thank you to Emilia White, who is our vice president. Navros, my friend, man, the president. And Elise Lyles, who is our operations manager. And everyone, Saki and all of them, who are behind the scenes that you do not see. They're tirelessly engineers and things like that that have made uh, the Cam Hill show what it is today. We're getting ready to go higher. I know that uh, with my producer. She's already explained that to me. Uh, we're getting to go wider because of and being global and things like that. But thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to continue. A-Star is one of the best. And I will tell you what we are going to do some things. Uh, also, this lady right here is an author. So she didn't want me to say that, but she is. So I'm going to dig in my bag a little bit. And I'm going to let you guys see that she has her own book. Woo! Right there. And tell us a little bit about this book, lady. Um, my book is called Everything Grows in the Valley. You look into this camera right here. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's to my the viewers. My book is called Everything Grows in the Valley, a story of redemption and learning to embrace life's adversities. And it is a memoir of my life. Uh, I've gone through lots of challenges from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, my earliest memory in life was being molested in a foster home. Um, but time after time, again, I was able to push through those adversities God sustained me, and I saw something special in my journey. Um, and I, my experience was something that I felt happened to me for a reason, and I felt compelled to share it with the world, to inspire. There are so many messages in the book, and Cam knows that. And yes. One of the, the overriding messages is never give up. But there's so many more. We sometimes, when we're going through the valley and we're experiencing the valley, we have a tendency to allow those experiences to become our perception, our self-perception, instead of allowing it to be an experience, something separate from who we are, we allow it to become who we are, and we lose our, in, our insight about life and about how we want to excel and do well in life, and we give up on ourselves. So this book will help you to really um, hold on to hope and understand that adversity, too, has a purpose. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful story, and um, I'm very proud of it. So again, um, if, you, if you're going through anything, if you've experienced anything um, that you feel is kind of taking you through um, adversity or depression, this is the book for you. And if you want to share it with someone, you can share it with someone. So hopefully my story will inspire you in some way. Well, I will tell you, I did read the book. I've read it about three or four times. I, I love uh, looks like it's got a thing. There you go. Uh, I love the story of Never Give Up. I first uh, read it from the time we met uh, in radio uh, for the, in last uh, April. And at that time, you know how you read books and they just give you something different each time. That first time all the way through, it was a masterpiece. It told me never give up. It was just a, her journey, but just to understand and see how that journey goes and us all in life. So I tell each one of you, never give up. Don't stop. Keep going. I know 40 million people are unemployed. You heard today about the dream, to, uh, the comedians talking to dreamers. You heard today about uh, Diana Patterson. She's my producer of this show but she did not give up of everything she's gone through. You know in your heart there's something that God has told you, Demarcus Bailey, telling you about how he became a filmmaker, how he just, even when money, you know, we always say about the money, that will come, but if God gives you a dream in your, in your spirit and in your life, know that dream is real. I was not supposed to do radio in my life. I've been doing real estate for 20 plus years. I knew nothing about media. 
nothing about entertainment, but God had given me this thought and this dream 20 years ago when I interviewed with one of the uh, radio stations here, a very well-known radio station, and they told me the income. When they told me the income, I said, I better go back to real estate. But when God tells you to do something, it's just kind of like Jonah in the well, you know? Jonah was supposed to go preach, but he ended up in the well, he still had to preach. So I say that to you. Don't let your dreams die. Don't stop. Don't let family stop you. Don't let anyone stop you. Because you are a champion. You are a winner. You're a warrior. And people will love you with or without it. Don't worry about them. Naysayers going to say, hey, say something. You're going to have haters. You're going to have people that don't like you. You're going to have, you know what? Keep going. Keep soaring. Many times we have to soar with eagles and leave chickens behind. Remember that. Much love to you. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you, my friend, for everything, for honored. all that you've done I for me, honored. and I appreciate you. So you get to see the producer of the show. Hello. Much <laughs> love and God bless. We'll see you next time, next week, we Monday. It will be Simone Red, Red Wine, and she will be on tonight. Look at it. Ready to love. It's going to be on the OWN channel, I mm -hmm. believe, mm -hmm. and it's with nephew Tommy. But we will see her in the building, in the studio, Monday, 1230 to 130 Central Standard Time. See you then. Bye.